Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? Chances are you're familiar with floppy disks, but there's one kind of floppy that you likely haven't seen, and for good reason. The story of Fujifilm's LT-1 is a brief one because the format was incredibly short-lived. The whole point of it was to shrink the size of the discs. Three and a half inch floppies had become the standard, but the desire to build smaller laptops left manufacturers pondering what components could be miniaturized. One such manufacturer was Zenith, which debuted its pint-sized Minisport laptop in late 1989. The machine was generally a run-of-the-mill notebook for the time, with an 8 MHz ADC88 processor, 1 or 2 MB of RAM, and a black and white backlit LCD screen. Zenith's goal was to make the computer as portable as possible, and in the process, it adopted the LT1 format as its primary storage. The disks held 720 kilobytes of data, but were only 2 inches in size which meant the drives were also physically smaller. While Fujifilm manufactured the media, Panasonic built the drives. But you couldn't just go out and buy one for your own PC. And that's because the format absolutely flopped. Some industry pundits predicted that LT1 would take off, but it never really left the ground. Part of the problem was that it was a bit of a step backwards in technology so-called high-density 3.5-inch floppies debuted in 1986 and held 1.4 megabytes, whereas LT1 only managed about half that. The other problem was the cost. Blank LT1 disks were expensive at launch, selling for about $10 US each, because Fujifilm couldn't subsidize their cost through drive sales, as Panasonic made those. While the Minisport was a compelling machine in terms of its technology, it was one of the smallest and lightest laptops of its time, weighing just about 6 pounds or a bit under 3 kilograms, it saw few buyers. Zenith realized that the 2-inch drive was a liability and not a feature, and offered an external 3.5-inch drive as an accessory. A later revision from 1990 saw the LT1 drive dropped entirely, with a 20 megabyte hard drive in its place. It ended up being the only computer ever to use LT1, and it's sheer luck that a bare drive and disk crossed my path. But LT1 wasn't the only competing alternative floppy from the 80s. Several came and went, all generally around 3 inches in size, but also ended up in use just by the specific platform they were paired with. Examples of these include the 3-inch quick disk format, manufactured by Mitsumi, which found itself in some Smith Corona word processors, as well as being the basis for Nintendo's Famicom disk system in Japan. Another was CF2, which was largely used in machines from UK manufacturer Amstrad. The PC clone makers had largely settled on 5.25 and 3.5 inch discs as their standard, so trying to sway that entire industry was quite the tall order for these newcomers. There was one alternative disc format, though, that actually did get some traction, though not in the devices you'd expect. In 1981, Sony introduced a 2-inch floppy disk it called Mavipack for use in its new line of Mavica video still cameras. That name might be familiar as it was used again in the 1990s for Sony's digital still cameras that also utilized floppy disks, but Mavica was actually a portmanteau of magnetic video camera. The initial models were effectively camcorders that only captured freeze frames, which were saved in the analog domain to Mavipack discs. This concept was actually picked up by some other manufacturers, including Panasonic, Minolta, and Canon for their own cameras. The Mavipack disc format was turned into a standard they all used and became known as video floppies, which could hold 25 images at full quality. 
video still cameras were marketed as alternatives to casual use film cameras, with the appeal being that there was no ongoing costs since the discs were reusable. While one could get prints made from their snapshots, they didn't look all that great since they were low resolution. Nevertheless, drives became available that were able to digitize the images into a computer, so the format saw limited use in desktop publishing. Some medical and industrial imaging equipment used video floppies as well, but the only occasion where the format was used to store digital data was in Sony's PJ100 word processor. And despite their similar size, the discs were not compatible with LT1. As history has shown, launching new formats was very hit or miss. They had to be sufficiently compelling for consumers to want to invest in them with minimal downsides if they did so. This was especially true with magnetic media. For every runaway success, there were many failures for a variety of reasons. Some were earnest attempts that came to market too late, but in the case of LT1, it was simply a format that nobody wanted. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.